The horror genre hasn't exactly been a domain known for black characters. The black guy always dies. This is interesting to me as the film thought of as one of the most important and iconic horror movies of the last many decades, Night of the Living Dead, has as its lead hero an African American. Ben was played by actor Dwayne Jones, and the role was historic for a number of reasons, not the least of which was the character wasn't specifically black or white. Jones was cast because he was a great actor. Don't worry about him, I can handle him. Probably be a lot more of them as soon as they find out about us. Jones would be part of a handful of black actors who would lead the way for other artists in the genre. These days sees black creators becoming some of the most well-known in the industry when it comes to horror films, be they producers, actors, writers, or directors. One of the biggest icons to come forth from the genre is the legendary Tony Todd, who has conquered not only horror, but science fiction as well. Tony's most well-known role, though, would be the modern classic Candyman. His performance in the film and its subsequent sequels secured him a place in the pantheon of modern horror films, alongside Freddy and Jason. But the difference with Candyman was not only his ability to talk, but what he had to say, and the emotional punch that carried along with Tony's performance. This episode of Whatever Happened to Our Favorite Horror Stars, we're focusing on the man whose voice will haunt you and offer you eternity, as long as you'll be his victim. Be my victim. This is the story of Tony Todd. Tony Todd was born in Washington, D.C. in 1954. His very young years were difficult due to issues with his mother, who he did reconcile with later on in life. He went to live with his aunt, Claire Ellison, in Connecticut when he was around three years of age. His aunt was a driving force in helping him pursue acting, helping him get into courses and training, and his eventual move to New York City, where he'd begin a career that would include on and off Broadway productions, including one-man shows and Shakespeare. He'd study at the Eugene O'Neill National Theater Institute. Tony would get his big break in film in 1986 with the Oliver Stone classic Platoon, where he would star alongside a who's who of Hollywood. Charlie Sheen, Keith David, William Dafoe, Johnny Depp, just to name a few, would be a part of a movie which would change the way Hollywood would look at war movies. It would also include a boot camp that lasted 30 days and would include the actors digging their own shelters in the dirt and having raids happen by their trainers. It was a brutal recreation but would help make the film into one of Oliver Stone's biggest hits. What followed was roles in films like Colors and Lean on Me. He also had small parts on TV series like Night Court, MacGyver, and Cop Rock. Homicide, arson, robbery, rip. It wouldn't hurt to stay up. Also in 1990, Tony Todd found himself cast in the lead role that Dwayne Jones had originally brought to life all those years earlier with Tom Savini's remake of Night of the Living Dead. Tony played Ben in the film, which over the years has been embraced as an amazing horror film which it is. The film changes things up with its ending, but still carries the message that Romero brought to the fore with his original film about humanity and the lack of it in people. It also has amazing effects, which you'd expect from a movie by Tom Savini. Tony would follow this up with the lead villain role in Voodoo Dawn, where he was a voodoo priest creating zombies and slaves. The film was co-written by Night of the Living Dead co-writer John Russo. What came after Voodoo Dawn, however, would be the film that would set Tony Todd on the highest reaches of horror royalty. In 1992, Tony took on the role of Daniel Robitaille, aka Candyman. The film was based off of Clive Barker's short story, The Forbidden. The film version focused on the story between Candyman and Helen Lyle, a graduate student interested in urban legends. Her husband also teaches at the school she is a student at. Helen's obsession with the subject and writing her thesis lead her on a faded course to the Candyman himself. Helen appears to be the reincarnation of the woman Daniel loved back when he was human, and that love was the cause of his mutilation and murder. He returns as the vengeful spirit who will split you from groin to gullet if you whisper his name in the mirror five times. Helen summons him, and as the film progresses, Candyman keeps murdering people that Helen knows, and she gets blamed for the deaths. Throughout the film, Candyman keeps offering Helen immortality with him by being his victim. Be my victim. Her name would be whispered in hushed voices of warning forever. Helen refuses him, but winds up sacrificing herself to save the life of a baby that Candyman had kidnapped and would have died if not for her. She finds that immortality anyway, thanks to this, and becomes her own legend, much to the later dismay of her cheating husband. Candyman was a hit, making four times its budget back. The film tackled heavy issues for the early 90s, including racism, gangs, and the little talked about issue of gentrification. Where most other black horror films tended to be more of the exploitative side, with a few exceptions, Candyman took its horror story and characters deadly serious. 
Tony Todd's performance in the film was mesmerizing and elevated the project to another level. There was a tragic hero quality to the role he brought. Tony took the part to heart, not wanting it to be considered another slasher film. He and co-star Virginia Madsen spent time together doing things like horseback riding and ballroom dancing to build that bond. But it would turn out that even in 1992, studios weren't quite ready for an interracial romance to be so in your face. The studio cut a number of scenes with Todd and Madsen that elevated that aspect of the film. The reason, Tony says, because it made them nervous. Nervous or not, the film was a hit. Tony would follow this role with one as the right-hand man of the lead villain in The Crow, opposite the late great Brandon Lee. But that hit meant the studio wanted more, and so in 1995, Tony would don the hook once again in Candyman Farewell to the Flesh. Farewell to the Flesh took place in New Orleans, and it follows Annie, the descendant of Daniel and his beloved Caroline, as it turns out Caroline was pregnant with his child. Annie's family has been haunted by the legend of Candyman, both literally and figuratively, with him murdering her parents and her husband. Farewell to the Flesh wasn't as well received as the original film, and it showed in a box office that was around half of what the first movie made back. Not giving up on the franchise, the studio released a third entry in 1999, but this time it was direct to DVD. The film was called Candyman 3 Day of the Dead, and it would follow Annie's now grown-up daughter Caroline, named after Candyman's lost love. The film gets a bit convoluted, with Caroline being the reincarnated soul of his daughter, with the original Caroline, who was named Isabel. The film was not received as well as the first two entries, and fans were left with just a trilogy of films. Tony Todd would continue working in both film and TV, with horror and science fiction two very welcoming genres. He'd be one of the numerous icons to be in the original Wishmaster film in 1997. What the fuck does that have to do with you? And be an integral part of the Final Destination series starting in 2000 as the sinister and mysterious man who seems to know more than a little about the game Death Plays. In 2006, he would appear in Hatchet as Reverend Zombie and return as the character in subsequent sequels. Numerous horror films would follow, including Candy Corn, Death House, and Hellfest, to name a few. He'd also return to the Night of the Living Dead universe in 2015 with Night of the Living Dead Origins 3D as the voice of Ben. Television would also see Tony be a part of some genre favorites. Besides a few roles in Star Trek, including one of the most heart-wrenching episodes ever made of Deep Space Nine as an adult Jade Sisko in The Visitor, Tony would appear in Angel, Charmed, The X-Files, Night Stalker, Masters of Horror, Holliston, Riverdale, and Scream, to name a few. Tony Todd continues to work and is not slowing down, nor is he stopping when it comes to creating horror that speaks about the true horrors in the world and that continue to haunt us. In September of 2020, Tony Todd starred in the third Tales from the Hood anthology film. Tony is part of the wraparound story, which bookends stories that speak to issues within the black community. Racism, gang violence, police brutality. The film series tackles them all, usually with bloody and or outrageous results. Tony also co-stars in the upcoming release, Hellblazers, alongside some more genre royalty, including Bruce Dern, Billy Zane, Adrian Barbeau, Meg Foster, and John Casser. The story, set in the late 1980s, follows a satanic cult that has a singular focus of unleashing hell on Earth. With the help of an ancient incantation, they conjure a demon, and its members are tasked with feeding it the populace of a nearby small southwestern town. Tony is also voicing the character of Scareglow in the upcoming series produced by Kevin Smith of the Masters of the Universe. Scareglow is a mysterious ghost skeleton that assists Skeletor in his schemes. But probably the biggest news to horror fans is the return of Tony Todd in Candyman, the sadly delayed but finally scheduled to be released this year latest entry in the Candyman franchise. Produced by Jordan Peele and directed by Nia DaCosta, the film promises a bloody and poignant story that doesn't shy away from today's turbulent issues, which was evident from the beautiful and tragic Shadow Puppet trailer released to promote the film last year. Images of not only Candyman's brutal murder, but the sadly everyday tragedies and horrors suffered by blacks are shown, all to the familiar refrain of Candyman's score. The story will follow the now-grown Anthony, the child saved by Helen in the original film, played by Yahya Abdul-Mateen II, Anthony returns to his old neighborhood, which is now going through a gentrification process, with the projects being torn down. The story follows Anthony, now an artist, just as Daniel was before he became Candyman. Anthony appears to call forth the spirit of Candyman, with Tony Todd voicing and appearing in the role. But it looks like he has plans for Anthony and slowly starts taking him over, much as the new residents of the Cabrini Green have done. The story also serves as a lesson that we should not forget our past because it's always there just waiting to remind us of it. 
Tony continues not only as a film actor, but on stage as well as writing and creating projects. He's a fantastic artist who makes everything he's in better, able to elevate material to another level just with his presence and talent. He deserves his place among our modern horror icons. Just don't say his name five times in a mirror. You never know. (laughs) 